from North Sounds here. Today I'm going to show you how I created the synth and bell pad that I featured in the beginning of this video. The synth pad is a saw wave that morphs into square bells and I use an AL1 EXI instrument within an init EXI program. So this is where we're at. We've got an init EXI program with the AL1. If you look at the screen, everything here is a shortcut into the sub pages and I'm gonna press this oscillator one and anything in oscillator it determines the wave of the sound and anything to do with pitch can also be accessed here. So as you can see, I've got saw pulse as the waveform for oscillator one and oscillator two. Here we've got saw pulse. Now I'm gonna to go to the mixer tab or the mixer page. Now, if you've got a Korg Nautilus, all you have to do is press the page button to find what I'm looking for. If if you find anything on my screen that's not on yours. Anyways, I'm going to go to the mixer page and I've got oscillator one and oscillator two already at maximum level. Now, if you've got a Korg Nautilus, this will be set to zero. So just go ahead and put that to 99. All right. What I'm going to do now is look at this parameter wave morph, wave morph on both oscillators. And since this is a saw pulse, if wave morph is set to zero, you'll hear a saw wave because that's the first part of this waveform. Now, if I change wave morph for both of them and go all the way to a hundred, they become square waves. So saw wave, square wave. So this waveform allows you to morph between the two waves. Now, if you want to make this conditional, you could use the AMS function. What I mean by conditional is if I want to change this from saw to pulse, I can press a switch and that will change from a saw wave to a square wave. And the pulse is a square wave because pulse width is set to 50. Another name for pulse wave is a rectangle wave. So if the sides of a rectangle are equal, it becomes a square. So pulse width at 50% make a square wave. Okay, so AMS, this is the assignable modulation source. I'm gonna change that to switch one. Switch one, and I'm gonna do that for oscillator two as well. Switch one, and intensity is gonna be at 100. So if I'm playing this without the switch on, I have the saw wave. And if I press this, I have the square wave. All right, so that's how we achieve that effect. Now, I'm gonna make this more analog sounding by playing around with the tuning. On oscillator one, I'm gonna tune that and just detune that by around seven and detune this by around negative four. There you go, and get a bit of chorusing from the two oscillators. And aside from that, I'm going to recreate the pitch drift that you get in analog synths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this page, pitch modulation. So pitch EG and modulation, and I'm going to go to oscillator one. And whatever I do here will actually affect the pitch. So say if I go AMS and I set this to the LFO, 
And I'll do the same thing for oscillator 2, LFO. And this time I'm going to choose LFO2. If I all, go all the way to 48, I get that. You can hear that the LFO is affecting the pitch and you get that vibration, you get that vibrato. And it's very extreme because I went 48 and that's equal to four octaves. Yeah. I'm just going to enter a small value about that much and a slightly different value for LFO2, 0.06 and 0.03. You can hear that very slight modulation in pitch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the LFO page and that's what determines the wave and the frequency that influences this value. So I'm going to go back to the home page and you can see that there are four LFOs over here. And I set the pitch of oscillator one to be modulated by LFO one and the pitch of oscillator two to be modulated by LFO two. So to enter the LFO, all I need to do is press that. And here we are, we've got a triangle wave and I'm going to change this to a random continuous wave. And here it is random for continuous and you get that. And I'm going to change the frequency to be much, much lower than what's there. So let's go three and I'll do something similar with LFO2. So I can go to LFO2 using this tab or I can go to LFO2 by going to the home page and pressing this LFO graphic, LFO2 tab, same thing. Now I'm gonna change this into a random five continuous wave, which is slightly different from the other one and also assign a, a low value. So there's a very slight pitch drift on both oscillators and they're independent from each other. So that one was set to two and this is set to three. And if I play it, there's a subtle difference in the pitch of both oscillators. So now we're back home and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to amp EG. And what this does is it determines the behavior of the volume of the sound over time. So amp EG, I'm going to press that. This is the ADSR. You can see the familiar um, parameters, attack, decay, and release, and sustain. I'm going to choose attack time and increase the value to around there. And I'm going to remove the sustain all the way. And I'm going to bring down this value as well, break and decay. I'm going to increase that and I'm going to increase the release. Okay. So what's going to happen is that quick sound that I was playing earlier has become slower and lingers longer when I let go of the keys. So I'm going to increase this some more. So right now when I press switch one, I get the square bell sound, but it's still following the same envelope as the saw synth pad. And what I want to do is when I press this, this shape also changes and I can use time modulation and level modulation. And we have the assignable modulation sources over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease this attack time by assigning switch one, all right? And have a look, I've got 70 over here. I want the attack to be at zero. So I'm gonna apply a negative value to reduce 70 by so that it's zero. So I get negative 70. And when I do that and press the switch, so I'm gonna play this normally first, it's a pad. But if I press switch one, it becomes immediate. And now it's a bell sound. And another thing I want to do is when I press the switch, I want the release time to increase. I want that bell sound to linger a bit more. 8 plus 58 is 66. So if I leave it like that, it's the pad. If I press that, it's the bell. So the amp envelope has changed depending on what I assign here. So switch one will decrease that from that and add this to that, right? 
Oh. So now let's have a quick look at the oscillator page again. So I'm going to press um, oscillator one and I'm going to go to the mixer page. So earlier, uh, if you've got a Nautilus, we increase this to 99 and this is the default setting. The volume of oscillator one and oscillator two are set to the maximum level. And if you look here, these are actually grayed out. I can't access these parameters. There's a balance over here. These are grayed out because the balance determines how much of the oscillator goes to the filter. So it's grayed out at the moment because when you go to the filter page, so here's the filter page at the bottom, or I can just touch this graphic where it says filter. If you look at the filter, there's only one filter that's active and filter B is inactive. And that's because this is set to single. And that's the case as well. If you go 24 dB, it's also just one filter. But if you go to parallel, it activates both filters. I've got filter A and filter B that I can apply to the oscillators of the synth. Filter A, I've got a frequency of 99. And I'm going to reduce that. Over there so around 44 and I've got filter B and at the moment you won't be able to hear this because nothing's assigned to filter B yet so we'll get to that so frequency I'm gonna make it a similar value to this one but a bit more so I'm gonna set that to around 47 or I'll make it 48 so I've got similar um, values and what I'm going to do is go back to the oscillator page and go back to the mixer. And this time I'm going to send the balance of one to zero. So when the balance is zero, this will be routed to filter A. If the balance is set to 100, it will be set to filter B. So it goes up to 99. So my oscillator two, which is this, will be sent to filter B. Right now you won't hear any difference because the filter is set to pan center. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan filter A all the way left and the value is just one, just type in one. And it's left, that's hard left. And filter B, I'll make that hard right. And I can just use the dial and it goes R127. Now, if you can pan your speakers at home or you can listen with one ear at a time, there is a difference between the left and right sound. So let me increase filter B so it's a bit more obvious. On the right side, it's brighter. And on the left side, it's more mellow. So let me increase that a little bit. Now, what I'm trying to do is emulate the behavior of some analog synths. You can actually play a key and the panning of the note changes whenever you play it. So we can recreate that effect by going to pan and I'm going to change this to random and random is actually zero on the keypad. So on the Nautilus, you just tap that twice and type in zero. But on the Kronos, I'm going to select that type zero and it becomes random or I can just touch that and turn the dial and it'll go all the way to random. So now every time I play a key, you'll hear the sound in different places within the stereo spread. And at the same time, you're getting a bit of that detune. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to set the filter envelope generator. In the home page, you see four envelope generators or EGs. So there's one, two, three, and four. And envelope one is usually assigned to the filter. So if I press that, it takes me to EG1. In parentheses, it says filter. So if I change the value of this one, what's going to happen? And increase this nothing's really changed and nothing's changed because I haven't set any intensity values for the filter to obey this envelope. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the filter page here, filter, and I'm going to go to filter mod and here I'll find filter envelope generator or filter EG. 
And at the moment, filter A and filter B are sent to EG1 by default. So what I want to do is I want to have different envelopes. I want to affect the brightness of the sound differently for oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. So right now this is set to EG1 and the intensity is set to 0. So I can increase that value and I'll put it around 40. And I'm going to change filter B, the envelope select, I'm going to change that to EG3. So I'm not putting it in EG2 because this is normally set to pitch. I'm going to send it to EG3. And I'm going to assign a slightly different value from the intensity up here. So let's make it 35. All right. And what I'm going to do now is go to the envelope generators. And I'm going to go change EG1. And now what I apply here will be sent to oscillator 1. So let me just create this shape. I'm paying attention to the graphic and what I hear. Going back to filter, maybe I'm going to adjust filter A to go lower. And I'm going to do the same thing with a third envelope, which is assigned to oscillator 2. Attack time is going to be somewhere there. Break and release time is there. Going back to envelope 1, increase that. And going back to filter, so I'm, I'm changing this as I go. This all depends on what I hear. And if it's too bright, it's going to lower the filter envelope intensity and maybe the filters themselves in basic. So frequency of this one, I'm going to set this at 41. I'm going to change that. Even lower maybe. So this is much lower than I had it originally. Add some more amp decay here. So this is the amp decay. Make it behave more like a pad. And I'm going to go to filter envelope. And if you hear something like that where a sound is lingering, you can just quickly press the compare button and reset that so nothing gets stuck. And if you've got a Nautilus, all you need to do is go to the drop down menu and press compare and then press it again. And one last thing is I'm going to apply an LFO to the filter when I play the key hard or when I play after touch. So, I'm going to apply an LFO to after touch by going to filter again. And here in filter, there's a filter LFO right here. And right now, filter A and filter B are set to LFO1. And earlier, we already used LFO1 to modulate the uh, slight pitch changes with a continuous wave. So I'm going to go to an unused LFO, which is LFO3. And I'm going to do that for this one as well. And if I go LFO intensity 99, I'll hear an extreme change in the brightness of the sound. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the LFO section right here. And currently it's set to LFO 3. I'm going to go there. And this is where we can actually apply the frequency changes. So if I go all the way 299, it's that fast. If I go lower, it slows down. So I'm going to set it somewhere here around 40. So I'm going to go back to my filter modulation and I'm going to go to filter LFO and I'm going to set the LFO intensity to zero. That means the filter will ignore the LFO 
if the intensity is at zero, but I'm going to use after touch. AMS is set to after touch. And I'm going to have two different intensity values that will affect the filter with the LFO3 when I apply after touch to the keys. This one I'll set at around 96, and this one I'll set AMS after touch. I'm going to change the intensity to around 99. There you go. So you can hear that when I play the key and dig deeper, you can hear the change in LFO. Now, if you've got a Nautilus without aftertouch, all you need to do is assign it to something else. So you can change the AMS to your pedal if you'd like. So there is a control pedal, a foot pedal. You can change it to that. Or you can assign it to your joystick, joystick plus Y, and the effect will be applied to this instead. Okay. But since I've got aftertouch on the Kronos, and those of you who have the Nautilus AT, you can use this. And there it is. What I'm going to do next is go to LFO3. I can go here and just touch that. LFO3, same page. Now, there is a frequency modulation parameter. And what this does is it allows you to set a controller to affect the speed of the frequency whether it goes slower or faster when you apply that controller. And in this case, I'm going to apply the same controller that I used to bring out the LFO in the first place, which is the after touch. There you go, after touch. And intensity, uh, let's just go maximum with 99. And what that does is the deeper I dig into my after touch, the faster the frequency becomes. If you've got a controller with polyphonic aftertouch, you can even have more fun with this and use polyphonic aftertouch as frequency modulation and filter modulation for your LFO here. So that's the fun of this. And we're pretty much done. One last thing I'm going to do is apply a pitch change when I release my keys. And there will be a slight dip in, in pitch to emulate you know, like an old uh, vintage synth. So I'm going to go to this envelope. So we've got EGs here and there's EG2. If I press EG2, this is EG2. And in parentheses, it says pitch. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a flat envelope, meaning anything with a value will be brought to zero and it will give me a straight line. So now it's a straight line. Right now, even if I make extreme values here, extreme changes here, nothing happens to the pitch. And that's because we haven't told this, the pitch modulation page how much this envelope will affect pitch. I'm going to set this release level right here to this value. I'm going to bring it all the way down. And right now we're not hearing anything. But if I go back to the oscillator page, I'll press exit and go back to the oscillator. And here it says pitch EG. So that's the pitch envelope. See, it says pitch envelope EG2. So if I go back to the oscillator page, pitch EG, we're actually talking about EG2 right there. And say if I put intensity to maximum 48, which is four octaves, if I play the keyboard and let go of it, the pitch will dive by four octaves. You can hear it. So of course, I don't want that extreme effect. So I'm just gonna put this somewhere here and I'll have uh, different values for both oscillators. Somewhere there, let's, let's have a listen. So it's a bit extreme, so let's go even lower than that. Maybe 1.4 and this one maybe 70.70. So if it's still too extreme, we'll turn that down some more. I don't really want to have an extreme detune when I let go. And now I'm going to add a bit of effects. So I'm going to go to the IFX page. So to go to the IFX page, you can press page and IFX on your Nautilus. On the Kronos, you can go to common and IFX. 
which is found here, or you can go back to the home page and just press the graphic over here, eye effects. So right now the effects are sent to left and right. I'm going to change this to eye effects one, and I'll be applying a chorus to this effect. So eye effects one has been set. You can see that the routing goes there. I'm going to go eye effects one, turn this on, and I'm going to change no effect to chorus. So there's a category search over the side, go to chorus, stereo chorus, and OK. So now we'll hear the effect. And what I'm going to do now is determine the settings for this chorus by going to IFX 1 to 12, which is this tab. And you can see stereo chorus is there. And what I'm going to do is just choose a preset. So this P stands for preset, and the preset name will appear here. So I just touch that arrow and have a look. You've got initial set. You've got super chorus. So I'm going to change I'm going to change that to super chorus. And next I'm going to go to the insert effects page. And I'm going to chain this chorus to another effect. And I'm going to choose modulation delay. So here in no effect, I've turned this on. And I'm going to go to modulation delay, delay. And there's stereo modulation delay, which is great for synth pads. Right? And in the master effects, so right now we have IFX1, IFX2, modulation delay. I won't go to the presets of this one anymore and leave it the way it is. I'm going to go to master effects. And I'm going to choose a reverb for this. Turn this on and choose reverb. And overb is the first one over there. I'm just going to choose that. Go OK. And I'm going to set the return value to maximum 127. So now the when I go to the IFX page, you can see that it sends to the master effects at 127. If I go to the master effects, it sends to the overb, also set to 127. So you hear both the delay and the reverb at the end of the chain. So that's that part. Now what I'm going to do, remember we set switch one to create the bells. I'm going to make the bells more interesting by adding a delay to it when I press switch one. So another delay I'll add to the chain. So IFX2, I'll chain that to IFX3. And I've got delay. And I'm going to choose stereo multi-tap delay. So there we have it. And OK. And if I press this. So I'm going to make this more extreme. I'm going to go IFX 1 to 12 to affect the multi-tap. And I'm going to choose a setting. And what I'm going to do is set this to dry so it doesn't get applied to the pad sound when I have the switch off. So I'm going to set this to dry. And dry is 0. Enter. And it becomes dry. And you'll only hear this stereo multi-tap delay when you turn on the switch. And switch 1 is going to be our source, and the amount will be set to around 50%. So we'll only apply the stereo multi-tap when we turn this on. And at the same time, I'm going to go back to Insert Effects, um, IFX2, which is the stereo modulation delay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off when switch 1 is selected. So go to IFX 1 to 12. We're in the second effect that's supposed to be affecting only the pad. I'm going to choose source as switch 1. But this time, I'm going to set this to minus 50 to counteract this value. So minus 50. If I've got switch 1 off, we only have the pad with a stereo modulation delay. And when I've got this on, I've got the bells with a stereo multi-tap delay. I'm going to make this bell sound more pronounced, going back to this amp EG. So we're going to change the decay value of this one. So right now, when we press switch 1, the attack is minus 70. 
and we're going to change decay time as well when the switch is on. So you, he you can hear that the bell sound becomes shorter. So without the switch, pad, with the switch, a short bell. And I'm going to go to pitch mod. So for oscillator 2, I'm going to go to AMS 2 and I'm going to assign this to switch. And I'm going to change the intensity value to an octave above so that when I choose the bell, I'll have a low bell and a high bell. So I'm going to change intensity to 12 and 12 is equal to an octave. So I've got that. It's just a pad. So I've got this one and press switch. And one last thing as well is I'm going to go to the three band EQ. Just touch that and it takes me to the EQ page and maybe just boost the lows a bit and the mids. And for MFX, let's go to this overb. And I'm going to change this one to Cathedral. And we have this big reverb for the entire sound. And that's how I created the analog pad that morphs into bells using the AL1 synth engine of the Korg Kronos and the Korg Nautilus. So I hope you like that. Thank you very much for watching. See ya. Bye.